Hi, I'm Shannon, one of the librarians here at Naperville Public Library, and today we are going to look at chefs, celebrities, and the dishes named for them. From appetizers to ice cream, pasta to patisserie, many dishes have been named in honor of famous people or for the chefs who created them. So let's take a look at some well-known dishes, and you might never guess where their names came from. So first we'll look at some that are named for the chef. So if you guessed that the Caesar salad was named for Julius Caesar, sorry, guess again. It was actually named for Chef Caesar Cardini, who invented the salad at the Hotel Caesars in Tijuana, Mexico. Born in Italy, Cardini moved to the United States in the 1910s and worked in hotels and restaurants in California. But when Prohibition began, he moved his restaurant enterprise south of the border to the tourist destination of Tijuana. The or origin story has Cardini tossing all of the salad's ingredients together, um, originally romaine lettuce, garlic, croutons, parmesan cheese, lightly boiled eggs, olive oil, and Worcestershire sauce, and serving the salad to friends over 4th of July weekend in 1924. His brother Alex added anchovies to the recipe two years later. The salad is still made tableside at the restaurant in the Hotel Caesars in Tijuana. You might not be familiar with the name Ignacio Anaya Garcia, but you're surely familiar with the snack he created and named after himself, nachos. Ignacio, known as Nacho, was an employee at the Victory Club restaurant in Piedras Negras, Mexico. When several restaurant customers asked for a snack, he grabbed some freshly fried corn tortilla pieces from the kitchen, then added melted cheese and pickled jalapenos. The new treat became known as Nachos Special and was added to the menu. When the Victory Club closed in 1961, Nacho opened his own restaurant. Though the original nachos only had three ingredients, now the sky's the limit and they can include olives, salsa, corn, meat, or guacamole. The Cobb Salad, with its mix of ingredients, seemingly has something for everyone. Bacon, cheese, avocado, red onion, hard-boiled eggs, chicken, and a big bed of greens. But where did it originate? The Cobb salad is named for restaurateur Robert H. Cobb, owner of the Brown Derby, the famous hat-shaped restaurant in Hollywood. It's questioned whether he or his head chef, Paul Posty, invented it. At the end of a busy night, the inventor of the salad threw together whatever was in the kitchen, and it was a fortuitous combination because it became a classic at the Brown Derby and beyond. Chef Alfredo de Lelio first developed his namesake pasta dish in Rome. He actually created it for his wife, Inez, in 1914. She was pregnant and having trouble finding foods that she could tolerate. De Lelio created a plain pasta dish with white sauce, but added butter and parmesan. The dish was added to his restaurant's menu, but really gained notoriety when Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, two celebrities of the silent screen, were honeymooning in Italy and ate at Delelio's restaurant in 1920. The chef shared his recipe with the couple, who took it back to the United States and popularized Fettuccine Alfredo here. They also sent him a gold fork and spoon to Alfredo the King of Noodles. Fettuccine Alfredo is generally known as Fettuccine al burro, Fettuccine burro e parmigiano, or pasta in bianco, in Italy. A classic New Orleans cocktail is the Ramos Gin Fizz, but who is it named for? Answer, its creator, Harry C. Ramos of the Imperial Cabinet Saloon, who invented it in 1888. The original recipe called for dry gin, powdered sugar, heavy cream, fresh lemon and lime juices, an egg white and orange flower water shaken for 12 minutes, then poured into a Collins glass and topped with soda water. Ramos's drink gained more popularity when he moved to a new bar called The Stag and employed shaker boys who each shook the concoction for a minute before passing it down the line. And now this section is in honor of songbirds and stage dwellers. So in the 19th and early 20th centuries, the chefs at fashionable restaurants would create dishes dedicated to and named after famous performers. After all, what better way to tell the world this person eats here than by naming a dish after them? 
Jenny Lind, the singer known as the Swedish Nightingale, who traveled with P.T. Barnum's circus and stimulated Lind mania across the land, had many dishes named for her, including a soup composed of rutabaga, gruyere cheese, cream, sage, and egg yolk, topped with the beaten egg whites, as well as Jenny Lind cakes flavored with vanilla, a Jenny Lind pudding made with the singer's preferred coconut, and oysters Jenny Lind. A variety of melon is also named Jenny Lind, supposedly after the singer who was so famous at the time that it was cultivated. Dame Nellie Melba, who was born Helen Porter Mitchell, she got the name Melba from her hometown of Melbourne, Australia, was an opera star in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and the first Australian to gain international recognition in the world of classical music. Four foods created by the same chef, Auguste Escoffier, were named for her. Peach Melba, which is composed of peaches, raspberries, and vanilla ice cream. Melba sauce, a puree of raspberry and red currant. Melba toast, which is a crisp, dry toast. And Melba garniture, which is tomatoes stuffed with chicken, truffles, and mushrooms with velouté sauce. You may have dined on chicken tetrazzini without knowing it was named after an Italian opera star, Luisa Tetrazzini. The dish, composed of poultry and mushrooms in a cream and cheese sauce, which is served over pasta and garnished with breadcrumbs, is believed to have been created between 1908 and 1910 by Ernest Arbogast, the chef at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, when Tetrazzini made her American debut. However, it's also been attributed to New York's Knickerbocker Hotel. Good Housekeeping magazine published the first reference to turkey tetrazzini in October 1908. French actress Sarah Bernhard was one of the most prominent figures of the theater in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Her popularity led to world tours and work in early motion pictures, as well as the nickname The Divine Sarah. She was celebrated around the world, including by chefs, who created dishes in her honor, such as Sarah Bernhard cookies, which were almond macaroons with a chocolate filling coated in mel melted chocolate, a fish dish called Soul Sarah Bernhard, and the Sarah potatoes from Del Monaco's restaurant in New York that are thought to be named for her. Auguste Escoffier, who created the dishes in honor of Nellie Melba, developed fraise à la Sarah Bernhard, a dish of wine-soaked strawberries with pineapple served over ice cream and topped with whipped cream. Despite dishes made in her name containing dairy, she was what was in that day termed a strict vegetarian, which is now a vegan, with a diet composed of cereal, fruit, nuts, and vegetables. In later years, she did consume fish and also enjoyed some cheeses. Anna Pavlova was a Russian prima ballerina in the late 19th and early 20th centuries and became the first ballerina to tour around the world. The meringue-based dessert filled with fruit and cream called the Pavlova was created in honor of her tour of Australia and New Zealand in the 1920s. The airy meringue was meant to be as light as Anna Pavlova. Its outer shell is crisp, but the interior is marshmallow-like, unlike classic meringue. The pav, as it is colloquially called, is still a popular dish in both countries, especially during the holiday season. Shirley Temple was a child star known for her singing, dancing, and acting. She also went on to become a diplomat in her adult life. But kids today may still recognize her name thanks to a non-alcoholic beverage named in her honor. It's not entirely clear which restaurant originally created this kitty cocktail. Uh, most stories claim Chasen's in Hollywood, though some say the Brown Derby. But the drink named for the starlet contains lemon lime soda or ginger ale, lemon juice, grenadine, which is pomegranate syrup for color, and a garnish of maraschino cherries. Shirley Temple stopped a soda company from selling a bottled drink with her name on it, claiming that it was not a generic term to be used freely and was an invasion of her privacy. The Roy Rogers drink was meant to be the mocktail equivalent for little boys, what the Shirley Temple was for little girls. It was made with cola and grenadine and garnished with a cherry. The drink was named for actor and singer Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, who apparently did not drink alcohol. 
He appeared on radio, film, and television from the 1930s to 1950s, accompanied by his horse, Trigger. He and cowgirl companion Dale Evans were known for their theme song, Happy Trails. The Roy Rogers drink has also been known as the Darth Vader, as other characters have supplanted Roy in cultural popularity. Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, founded in 1978 in Vermont, has named many of their frozen treats after celebrities or bands, including Fish Food, Stephen Colbert's Americone Dream, and Mint Chocolate Chance, named for Chance the Rapper. But their first flavor named for a rock legend was Cherry Garcia in 1987, named for Grateful Dead guitarist Jerry Garcia, at the suggestion of a deadhead, as Grateful Dead fans are known, from Portland, Maine. The original version of Cherry Garcia used whole Bing cherries and small chocolate chunks in vanilla ice cream, and today the ice cream is cherry flavored. Its popularity endures. As of 2021, it has been number two in Ben & Jerry's top flavors list for eight years running. And now let's look at some regal recipes. Did you know that one of the most popular brunch cocktails is named for a merciless queen? The Bloody Mary, a brunch favorite that contains tomato juice, vodka, Worcester sauce, and Tabasco, was created by Fernand Pete Petio at Harry's Bar in Paris, but not in its current form. Originally, it was only vodka and tomato juice, but when Petio moved to the King Cole Bar at the St. Regis Hotel in New York City and added horseradish, Tabasco sauce, lemon juice, and celery salt to the drink, the classic was born and renamed the Bloody Mary. The belief is that its moniker was taken from Queen Mary I of England, eldest daughter of Henry VIII, who earned her nickname due to the Marian persecutions during which she had nearly 300 people burned at the stake for their religious beliefs. One of Mary Tudor's cousins also has a dish named in her honor, Consomme Mary Stuart, a mutton soup with pearl barley and seasonal vegetables, is named in honor of Mary Stuart, a.k.a. Mary Queen of Scots. Earl Grey Tea is an enduring blend. It's been around for about 200 years, and it's even made its way to space as the favorite beverage of Captain Jean-Luc Picard on Star Trek The Next Generation. But who was the Earl for whom it was named? Charles Grey was the second Earl of Grey. He was educated at Eton and Cambridge, elected to Parliament at the age of 22, and eventually served as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1830 to 1834. And according to the Grey family, the tea was specially blended by the Chinese Mandarin for Lord Grey to complement the water at the family's home of Howick Hall in Northumberland, using bergamot to offset the lime, as in limestone, not the fruit, uh, in the local water. Uh, the tea gained popularity when Lady Grey served it while entertaining and was eventually marketed by the Twinings brand. A pizza margarita is a Neapolitan pizza made with San Marzano tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, and fresh basil. While this dish had already been invented in Naples as of the late 1700s and early 1800s, in June of 1889, pizzaiola Raphael Esposito christened the dish Pizza Margarita in honor of the Queen of Italy, Margarita of Savoy, and the Italian unification, uh, the consolidation of the different Italian states into one state. Since its toppings are tomato, red, mozzarella, white, and basil green, which are the colors of the national flag of Italy. If you're a fan of older sitcoms, you may recall the dish Veal Prince Orloff as a punchline in episodes of Frasier, when Niles Crane recalls sending the dish back at his eighth birthday party, or the Mary Tyler Moore Show, when Mary Richards makes it as the meal for a doomed dinner party. But what exactly is Bre Veal Prince Orloff, and who was it named for? Veal Prince Orlov, also Orlov, or Veal Orlov, is a veal roast stuffed with mushrooms and served with a Mornay sauce. It was popular dinner party fare in the 1960s thanks to Julia Child, who popularized the French dish in America. That's right, French. It was created by Chef Urbain Dubois at the Russian Embassy in Paris in honor of the Russian ambassador to France at the time, Prince Nikolai Alexeyevich Orlov. 
Queen Victoria ruled England for 64 years, so there was plenty of time for foods to be named in her honor. They include the Victoria sponge or sandwich cake, two sponge cakes filled with whipped cream and jam, filet of sole Queen Victoria, uh, filets of sole rolled around fish mousse poached and served in a Newburgh sauce, a plum and an apple named for her, and a dessert tart. Her husband, Prince Albert of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha, likewise had various dishes named for him, including filet of beef Prince Albert, a pounded beef filet filled with pâté de foie gras, then wrapped in rashers of bacon and braised in a Madeira-based stock, Albert sauce, which is horseradish, egg yolks, cream, bouillon, mustard, and vinegar, Saxe Coburg soup, a cream soup made with ham, potatoes, onions, and Brussels sprouts, and Albert pudding, a steamed pudding made of eggs, raisins, and candied citrus peel. Despite having many luxuriant dishes named in her honor, Queen Victoria was known to favor simpler foods such as pies and invalid soups. By contrast, her son, Edward VII, was known for having lavish tastes and 12-course dinners. The dishes Poulard, Edouard, Set, uh, chicken stuffed with foie gras and truffles, and turbot prince de gal, uh, poached turbot gar garnished with oysters and fried mussels in a champagne sauce, were named in honor of him by French chefs. If you're a fan of the Great British Baking Show, you may have seen the Battenberg cake being made. It's a sponge cake covered in marzipan, and when cut, the cross section shows a distinctive 2x2 two two pattern that is traditionally colored pink and yellow. The sections are held together with apricot jam. So why Battenberg cake? Well, the first cake was baked in 1884 to celebrate Prince Louis of Battenberg marrying Princess Victoria, and this was Queen Victoria's granddaughter and Prince Philip's grandmother. In 1917, the members of the Battenberg family in the UK changed the name to Mountbatten in the face of rising anti-German sentiment at the time. Uh, the name Battenberg translates to Batten Mountain, so Mountbatten was the choice for the change. However, the name of the cake remained the same, and it is also called Domino Cake and Church Window Cake in early recipes. Beef Wellington is an indulgent dish composed of a mustard-coated beef filet wrapped in a layer of duck cells, a paste of mushrooms, shallots, and herbs, then wrapped in puff pastry and baked. It is believed the dish was created in celebration of the first Duke of Wellington, Arthur Wellesley, and his victory at the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815. The Duke was given his title after defeating Napoleon Bonaparte the previous year. While pastry-wrapped beef dishes had existed prior to this, such as the French filet de boeuf en croute, theories about the renaming in honor of Wellington include the removal of French words from English menus, since France was an enemy of England at the time, and because it resembled a Wellington boot, which is also named for the Duke. Uh, beef Wellington was a favorite dish of Richard Nixon and is still considered the ultimate in special occasion fare. And now we'll look at some dishes from the White House. A variety of dishes and foods have been named in honor of American presidents, first ladies, and family members. In some cases, the name is to honor the person, such as Delmonico's dish, Apricots with Rice a la Jefferson, a rice pudding dish taking the name of the third president, Thomas Jefferson. In other cases, the first lady was the chef. Martha Washington's cake was a fruit and spice cake doused in brandy and Madeira, served at Mount Vernon at the holidays. The original recipe called for 40 eggs, 4 pounds of butter, 4 pounds of sugar, 5 pounds of flour, and 5 pounds of fruit. Bess Truman's Ozark pudding was the favorite of her husband, President Harry Truman. It is a cake-like fruit pudding with pecans or black walnuts. The dish originated in the Ozark Mountain region. Mamie Eisenhower's fudge recipe was published after she became first lady, including ingredients such as evaporated milk, marshmallow fluff, two types of chocolate, and chopped nuts. It was touted as Mamie's million dollar fudge. Mamie claimed that as a young bride, she could only make fudge and mayonnaise and said that her husband, President Dwight D. Eisenhower, was a better cook than she. 
One name that remains in question is the Baby Ruth candy bar. The Curtis Candy Company, who brought the caramel, nougat, and peanut candy bar to the public in 1921, has always claimed that it was named after Baby Ruth Cleveland, daughter of President Grover Cleveland. However, Ruth Cleveland died in 1904 at age 12. It seems more likely given the timing that Curtis was hoping to latch onto the rising star of baseball phenomenon George Herman, Babe Ruth, without having to pay for his name. Interestingly, in 1926, Babe Ruth entered the candy business and put his name on the George H. Ruth Candy Company. When his company attempted to register a chocolate bar called Ruth's Home Run Candy, which included a picture of Babe Ruth in his uniform on the wrapper, the Curtis Candy Company sued for copyright infringement. So now let's look at the rich and famous. Oysters Rockefeller was created in 1889 at the New Orleans restaurant Antoine's by Jules Alciator, son of the restaurant's founder Antoine Alciator. The dish was developed due to a shortage of escargot, substituting oysters instead. The dish was named Oysters Rockefeller after John D. Rockefeller, then the wealthiest man in America for its extreme richness. The oysters are topped with a mixture of sautéed watercress or spinach, parsley and onions with breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. They are then run under the broiler until browned and served immediately. The original recipe remains a secret that Alciator refused to surrender even on his deathbed. Antoine's restaurant in New Orleans' French Quarter is still open and serving Oysters Rockefeller to this day. Another dish with New Orleans roots, Bananas Foster, was created at Owen Brennan's View Carré restaurant. In 1951, Ella Brennan and the restaurant's chef Paul Blanier modified a dish made by Ella's mother in the Brennan family home. New Orleans was a hub for the import of bananas from South America at this time, so they were plentiful. The dish is composed of bananas and vanilla ice cream in a sauce of dark rum, butter, brown sugar, cinnamon and banana liqueur, which is then ignited, as you can see in the picture on the right. The dish was named in honor of Richard Foster, the chairman of the New Orleans Crime Commission and a friend of restaurant owner Owen Brennan. You can still get Bananas Foster flamed tableside at Brennan's Restaurant in New Orleans. Delmonico's was New York City's first restaurant proper, opened in 1837 by the Delmonico brothers, who provided French fare and printed menus. It was also the first restaurant to be reviewed by the New York Times. The name Delmonico's became synonymous with fine dining, and dishes were created to honor regular diners. Eggs Benedict was created for and named after restaurant regulars Mr. and Mrs. Legrand Benedict, a Wall Street banker, and his wife in the 1860s. The decadent brunch staple is composed of two halves of a toasted English muffin topped with Canadian bacon, poached eggs, and holiday sauce. A parody version of this dish turned up in the television show Archer in the form of Eggs Woodhouse, involving beluga caviar, pata negra ham, truffles, salmon, artichoke bottoms, and more, named after Woodhouse the long-suffering butler of Playboy spy Sterling Archer. Delmonico's also introduced a lobster dish from sea captain and regular patron Ben Winberg, initially known as Lobster a la Winberg. But when he and Charles Delmonico had a falling out, the dish was banished from the menu. This didn't stop patrons from asking for it, however, so it was renamed Lobster Newberg and stayed on the menu. Arnold Palmer was a professional golfer known as one of the greatest players in history. Given the nickname The King, he was the first superstar of golf in the television age beginning in the 1950s. His career lasted more than six decades and he won 62 PGA Tour titles. The drink bearing his name is half lemonade, half iced tea. He asked a waitress for it one day at a restaurant, another patron overheard and asked for the same thing, and the rest is history. It's a refreshing beverage on a hot day or after a round of golf. And thank you for watching. Hope you've learned a little bit about food history. Hope we've made you hungry to come check out some of our cookbooks, and uh, hope we'll see you again soon at the library, and bye-bye for now.